Biology is the only subject where multiplication is the same as division. Stay tuned to discover this fascinating field one video at a time. In the last few weeks, I've illustrated how Illumina and Pacific Biosciences do their sequencing. Sadly, I'm not convinced of investing in either of the two companies even though I'm actively looking to add a sequencing company into my biotech portfolio. If either of the companies have new developments that tilt me in favour of the other, I'll definitely let you know. Recently, there is a new biotech kit on the sequencing block, BioNanoGenomics, and it has been talked about in every corner of YouTube and many of you have requested that I talk about it too. Finally, it's time to give this company a look because you asked for it. Since there are so many things to cover, I'll divide the video into two parts and today I'll cover the scientific fundamentals of their products as well as how they compare against Pacific Biosciences. There are two major areas of BNGO technology, optical mapping as well as optical sequencing. Let's focus on the first. Optical mapping is not sequencing. Instead, it is a method to visualize the entire human chromosome. Some may ask, why do it? Remember a few videos back, I mentioned that there are different types of DNA mutations. In that video, I focused on the small mutations and omitted describing the large mutations because that part is kept for this video. So let's focus on the large mutations right away. This group of mutations frequently involves in excess of hundreds if not tens of thousands of bases. Rather than implicating one or few genes, it may affect a section or even entire chromosomes and can be grouped into structural or numerical aberrations. Structural aberrations can be further categorized into translocations, deletions or insertions, inversions and duplications. Let's talk about how inversions occur to give you a deeper insight. In situations where we are exposed to radiant energy in a form of X-rays for example, the energy is sufficient to break DNA molecules and in the case of inversions, this can occur by chance at two different parts and since double-stranded DNA structure is broken instead of a single strand, this can lead to imprecise repair mechanisms where the loose DNA segment is flipped around before being joined back during the repair. This therefore leads to a structural abnormality compared to the original. Numerical aberrations on the other hand do not involve chromosomal structure itself. Rather, it increases or decreases the number of chromosomes that we originally have. One famous example is that of Down's syndrome. In normal situations, we only have two copies of a chromosome, one from our father and the other from our mother. During cell division and after replication of DNA, there could be unequal separation of the chromosomes resulting in one of the newly formed cells acquiring one more copy, for example. Both structural and numerical chromosomal aberrations can lead to diseases, so the ability to visualize them can potentially help us identify what is wrong with the patient. What BioNanoGenomics does is to cause the chromosomes to light up so that it can be visually observed. So how do they do so? First, the patient's cells are collected and DNA is retrieved from them. Then, the DNA molecules are stretched out onto a microfluidic device similar to the flow cells of Illumina. Except that each cell contains a single DNA molecule instead. Then, the DNA cutting enzymes known as restriction enzymes are used. These enzymes cut specific sequences whenever they appear, resulting in DNA fragments of different sizes. They are then stained with a mixture of fluorescent dyes. These dyes have different binding affinities to different segments of DNA. As a result, when the DNA fragments are visualized, their overlaps allow the building of the entire chromosome optical map. So if one were to compare between the normal chromosome and a chromosome with an inversion for example, one will be able to conclude that an inversion has occurred. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of the BNGO's optical mapping. The good thing is that this opens up the discovery of DNA mutations that is not possible with DNA sequencing. This is because DNA sequences only yields the nitrogenous bases allowing one to determine small mutations. However, there's no ability to detect chromosomal aberrations. It's like DNA sequencing is looking at the imperfections of single grains of rice. Looking at that, one cannot tell what is the taste of the rice. However, unlike techniques like gene editing that can correct the small mutations on the DNA, there are currently no technology to correct chromosomal aberrations. So there is not much value in the knowing. 
It's like being handed a death sentence versus accidental deaths. With a death sentence, at least you know you are going to die. But there's no way you can avoid it. So what's the point? Not only that, whilst optical mapping technology or bio nanogenomics can visualize the structural aberrations, it is not able to show numerical aberrations. This is in comparison to an older technique known as karyotyping, which is able to show both structural and numerical aberrations. The old method is way cheaper since it does not need a new machine, nor the microfluidic cells. Now, let's focus on the other bio nano genomics technology, optical sequencing. In this area, they are trying to compete with Illumina as well as Pacific Biosciences. So let's see how it works. Just as before, patient cells are obtained where the DNA is isolated and applied onto the microfluidic cells. Then, an optical mapping is done. The idea is that subsequent sequencing data can immediately be tied to a particular region of a chromosome. Once that is completed, another enzyme, DNase 1, is added. This enzyme randomly nicks at the single strand of a double-stranded DNA and is followed by yet another enzyme, a T7 exonuclease, which will chew through the nucleotides beginning at the nicked sites. Extreme care must be taken here to control the timing. Otherwise, all the nucleotides will be gone. The T7 exonuclease is then washed off, and this is the part that sequencing actually begins, where the DNA polymerase is added, and using the other strand as a template, begin re-adding the nucleotides. Of course, by now, for channel subscribers, you know the drill. Fluorochrome labeled DNTPs, which are the raw materials, will be added, where each nucleotide will yield a different color when excited. The difference is that instead of adding all the labeled DNTPs together, only one of the four is added at any one time. Where the relevant DNTP raw material is required, it will form the base pair and the DNA polymerase will incorporate it onto the existing 3'OH of the last nucleotide. This would yield a signal and is captured. Then, an additional step called bleaching occurs, using the laser to destroy the fluorocomb whilst the rest of the structure remains intact. This will begin the next cycle with the next labelled DNTP. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of this type of DNA sequencing. And the good thing is, it can read long stretches of DNA just like Pacific Biosciences and it can do one better. Since the long stretch of DNA is broken up in many parts, DNA polymerase only needs to add a short stretch of DNA each time. And this should reduce the errors that arise from the long reads compared to the Pacific Biosciences version. However, there are also major disadvantages. Firstly, this technique will take a longer time because of the additional step of optical mapping, even though the information gained may be useful. Next, it needs additional enzymes like the DNAs1, the T7 exonuclease, as well as the DNA polymerase, which means it's going to be more expensive. And on that front, it cannot outcompete with Illumina's benchmark low sequencing costs anytime soon. Finally, sequencing may fail if the T7 exonuclease step is not controlled properly, so it is not as robust as the other sequencing techniques. Again, back to my original point that users of the Illumina machines, who are the majority right now, are not going to change to BNGO machines anytime soon, unless there are significant advantages. Based on all these points, I believe that bio nanogenomics still got a ways to go before I'll be interested in this talk. Recently, however, some YouTubers are highlighting the potential of BNGO technology in cancer diagnosis, which will represent a growth opportunity. Let me explain what is cancer biology in the next video to see if that really is the case. For channel subscribers and long-term supporters who watch till the end of every video, this bonus section is just for you, where I talk about changes to the video format, future directions, and even things outside of the biotech stocks. For starters, I received a severe critique of my intro a few weeks back. It affected me initially, but I consider it a ritual by fire. As you might have noticed, the intro is now shorter and straight to the point. Next, I've added timestamps in the video description below because I've noticed some of you are reviewing the material because you want to understand the concepts or that I'm too fast. So with the timestamps, I hope it will be easier for you. And on that note, this channel has grown all because of your support. I'm so lucky to see this kind of engagement compared to the other channels on YouTube. And I'd like to take the opportunity to shout out to Waisu for being the first ever to comment on my biotech stock video back in 2020. 
the first comments are usually the most precious to the YouTube creators. I also want to give a shout out to Duncan for taking precious time to provide additional insights to things I don't even know for companies that I cover. This is a precious treasure trove for anyone who actually takes time to read through the comments. And also to Peter for taking time to add resources to some of the talking points in the previous videos. Thank you, thank you. And to Adam for commenting just so to move the YouTube algorithm needle. For Dan Hansen, Ben Pershaw, Mosidian, Chili with a triple Y, Go Reserve, Emily Thorne, and so many more. You have my deep gratitude. And before I end, tip off my hat to Feliz who has been helping me tirelessly in the background with the video production. I plan something helpful for the Watch Till The End Gang next week. I hope you look forward to it and leave me your thoughts as always. I'd like to end with a quote from a TV doctor. Friends are the family we choose and I choose you. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.